I'm Ryan Arciero, and you're watching Dirt Live. Hey, welcome back to Dirt Live. We're here with our special guest, Larry. Incredible, man. You know, you watched that video a little bit. Does that bring back old memories, man? <laughs> the, the hair the and hound? Yeah, for sure, George. Uh, well, first of all, you know, it's great being here. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, yeah, the video is awesome. You know, um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know that, you know, my, my racing started with motorcycles, and um, I've logged in a lot of miles in Lucerne Valley, so some pretty technical stuff out there. People think of a desert race as, uh, you know, just flat across the yeah. desert, you know, but it's far from that. It's super technical, and um, especially when it's a national like that. Well, let's, let's go back a few years, Larry. Let's, you know, age. Uh, you know, let's... <laughs> Just let's, a few now. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> um, you still look as young as ever. Oh. So, you know, let's go back. Um, when, you, when did you start? What age? You know? you know, my dad got my first mini bike for me when I was five years old. And um, Paris Raceway, you know, Southern California, around here, just um, raced uh, local desert races. First, first just camping with the family. But, you know, it really just started at a young age, and I had no idea where it was going to you know, take me, and um, I can remember going to races with my dad and Malcolm Smith, you know, sitting in a melt crate in an old van, yeah. and, you know, just going to a local race, and um, On Any Sunday came out, of course, you know, yeah. that was uh, Malcolm's a big influence on my career for sure, so, um, you know, it just kept evolving, you know, local, local district, like we watched the video, you know, National Hare and Hounds, and, and then start venturing off to Hare Scrambles and National Enduros, start traveling more across the country and then pretty soon it was international stuff you know the six days and um, so it's just been uh, a lot of years of motorcycles I think I've probably ridden around the world a couple times on a motorcycle you know logged in a few miles but um, it's um, it's been pretty amazing actually you know I've uh, raced all over Europe I was able to do Dakar in 04 sort of came out of retirement for that so um, motorcycles have been good to me you know, you, you know, you go back and uh, I remember back when you first started, you know, you rode for Husky, you know, when you first, was that your first real ride? Well, actually, no. Um, it's pretty funny. Harley Davidson back in the day had a two stroke, um, it was an Italian uh, manufactured motor and they had a dirt bike, you know, the, the Baja 100, they called it. Yeah, of all, of, yeah, of all uh, names. But um, then they had a 250cc also. But um, my first, Baja 500 was riding one of the Harley Davidson Baja 100s um, in 1972 with Mitch Mays, wow. and, and we won the 125cc class. So now I know later on your let, let's talk your first win in Baja on a big bike. You know when you stepped it up. Well, that that, that Harley Davidson program, um, Dale Marski had a, a dealership in San Bernardino, and um, Bruce Ogilvie. Um, you know we were partners and friends for years and uh, we built a 250 cc and then in 1975 Bruce and I won we overall the Baja 500 so that was really um, I mean I, I, I had won you know like local hare and hounds and some stuff but that was really probably the first big you know big score race for sure big event that I won so yeah. 1975 with Bruce yeah I saw that the video of it when you guys went now that was before the Honda came about right with you I mean with Bruce and now Bruce ended up going up yes there yeah. you, you guys rode a Husky I think in that one or would you ride no in? that was a 250 Harley Davidson oh, that was, was still a, the Harley. yeah that was okay. still the Harley yeah matter of fact that race I can remember um, a lot of people will know this place the shipwreck down by Camelot yeah I can remember right in that area right before Camelot I passed Al Baker and um, I can remember he um, I was catching him and I remember him looking over and he just like changed lanes on me. You know, I was young and naive, and I said, "Well, I wonder why he did that." You know, <laughs> I switched lanes and you know yeah. continued on trying to pass him. You know, and now I look back at it and, and think, "Well, son of a gun, he was just trying to roost me and rock me and you know m make it so I couldn't pass him." But um, yeah, great, great, a lot of lot of stories for sure. Now you had a lot of great partners. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, in motorcycles, um, as we're playing, people are getting to watch some of the video. Um, this was probably uh, one of the greatest times for you. I know you and Roger. Uh, did you ever realize that morning um, that you were going to win the thousand? Well, you know, 
believe it or not, every race we go to, all of us as racers, you know, we, we plan on winning. That's, that's just the nature of the beast. We, we don't go there to get second place. And um, I think my career, you know, is, I've been blessed with a lot of wins, but there's been a lot of seconds and thirds. But, but yeah, you know, I'm, I go with a very confident approach to every race. So, um, and, and, you know, and Roger and I, we tested a lot. The car was super, super good. He was very dedicated. And uh, everybody wanted to win. So, um, you know, earlier we were talking, you know, like what's my most important or, or you know, the, a race that stands out the most as, as victories. That's a really tough question to answer. But, you know, definitely some of the races uh, with Roger and, and uh, with Troy winning, you know, even though I've won it on a bike 10 times, let's say the 1,000, um, the few times that I've won it in a car, I mean, they, they're pretty special. They definitely stand out. I mean, you know, you and I have, been around, you know, known each other for a long time. I know a young man that we all lost back in, uh, was that, that, that terrible loss for you? I mean, that was pretty, the year before you and him won, and, and the next year, uh, that, that kind of took the wind out of the yeah. sail for, for you as far as motorcycles? Well, I'm going to try to keep it together here. It's always been pretty emotional for me, but, um, you know, I mean. I, I retired in 94, so, you know, Danny was, um, was a great kid, and he was, you know, he, he, he wanted to race, you know, that was his, that was his life. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I stepped down in 94 and, you know, Ty and Danny and I won in, in 94, we won the thousand. That was my 10th win overall. Yeah. So that was, you know, and I wanted to go drive. I, I, I mean, I, I was friends with a lot of, uh, you know, like Walker and got to meet, you know, a lot of the off-road, the four-wheel community. So I wanted to take that step and I started building my own pre-runner. Kurt LeDuc helped me. And uh, he actually, the first couple races I did in a truck was with Kurt. So in, in 95, I did two races for Walker. And unfortunately, June of 95 is when Danny died. Yeah. So it was, um, I, I was still under contract with Kawasaki, still doing a lot of events. But, you know, being at the top, um, and I've said this before, you know, it, it's, it was sort of like playing Russian roulette. I, I, I don't like saying it, but it, it's just, it's dangerous. You know, it's, it, in Mexico, it's, it's, it's a very uncontrolled environment and um, more so even back then. I think now it's much safer um, with the efforts of, you know, especially like what Roger's doing and, and um, just every, the, the awareness, you know. But, but the bottom line is, you know, you can't control every every crossroad and rancher and you know I hit a Volkswagen van head on one year in the late 70s going to Mike Sky Ranch yeah flew hit it flew right over the top of it and landed in the bushes you know ended leading the race and um, you know ended 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 our day of course and um, so there's just you know it just got to a point for me that the number 10 was uh, that was a nice round number so I thought it was a good time to you know step down well I know you had a great career you know as as the list goes on. I mean, we were going to put up, uh, uh, we'll put it up and show some of the, the wins over all on the bikes, but, you know, names of, you know, Jack Johnson, and it just, the, the list goes on. I mean. Well, yeah, I had, uh, you know, in this, this sport, yeah, it, it's not, definitely not a one-man um, effort. I mean, I've had incredible, not only teammates, um, the list, Rolf Tiblin, AC Back, and Mitch Mays, you know, you mentioned uh, Bruce Ogilvie, yeah. Chuck Miller. Um, I'm going to forget names and going to get in trouble here, but, you know, it's been, you know, Paul Krause and Ted Honeycutt and Ty Davis and Danny Hamill, uh, Marty Smith, Danny Laporte, um, but the team managers, you know, the team, the, the mechanics, how about the mechanics, you know, the people that yeah. really get no recognition, the, the, the crew, you know, the, the, the co-rider, the co-driver, co-passenger, whatever you want to call them. Um, I mean, they're really, you know, the unsung heroes in, um, in our sport, the mechanics for sure. A lot of efforts, a lot of effort yeah. behind the scenes. You can see right here, you know, a lot of behind the scenes, you know, guys racing uh, that you've been, you know, involved with, um, with Tim, you know, Herps and Troy and the Herps and then Roger and his crew. And well, it, it becomes, you know, very emotional. I mean, there's a lot of effort and a lot of time as everybody... Um, that's racers knows that the dedication the efforts put put in towards it i mean just to finish the race you know let alone win the race so there's um i don't think there's added pressure yeah. but um 
Look at the wins up here. I mean, if you look at um, the list, 11 of his overall, this is your 11, I mean, motorcycles. And then we go into the, uh, when you, you know, the last year, uh, looks like 93. Yeah, this, And then those we are, jump into it with Troy Herps. Yeah, that's the Baja 500. Yeah, just five, that's just 500. Yeah. So, I mean, if you take San Felipe, how many, you won a bunch of those. Well, those are just overall wins. Yeah, these are. <laughs> there's, there's about um, five or six more class wins in there, yeah. so. You know, the, the, the number overall seems to stand out in everybody's heads, but, you know, I have, um, yeah, with, with um, you know, Parker and San Felipe and all, all the other events, you know, the, throughout the Vegas to Reno, um, I've won both on a bike overall and a car overall, so that's sort of cool, you know. You know, I, I, I was at the Heron Hound there Sunday and talked to Kurt Caselli, and I talked to Kurt about you. I said, yeah, Larry's going to be on the show because Kurt's been on the show. And you'll be interested in this. Is uh, I go. How do you? How would you guys compare? You know, you look at these guys now. You know, Larry, um, Kirk Caselli, and these guys over the years. I mean, do you see the speeds any faster than back when you were well, racing at your that age? Yeah, I don't know if the speeds are really any faster. I mean, obviously the the machinery has changed, the terrain has changed. It's you know rougher, um, and because of the equipment, I think the the terrain that they choose is a little yeah. more challenging, but you, you, you mentioned Kurt, I love Kurt. And, and, and nowadays the guys are, they, they become a little more specialized in one field, yeah. one area. And Kurt's a lot like how we were back in the day. Cause we would do a Baja 1000 one weekend, a national enduro the next, and then, you know, a national hair scramble and, you know, just bouncing around yeah. and do Atalanta Grand Prix. And, you know, so you had to do everything you had to be really versatile right and kurt is definitely one of those guys it just like you. I, I think kurt, I, I admire I, yeah. his any in you know he, he's not playing the the ego card and macho card like oh i'm all, i can only do you know hair and hounds or i can only do works races you know yeah. he'll 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 get on the bike and you know he likes to ride and and whatever the challenge is so i i admire that and, and you know what he said about you i'm going to tell you <laughs> um this is this is cool I, you know, we talk, I talked about, you know, hey, what, what do you think about Larry Rossler? And he goes, I'm going to tell you, we raced a race a few weeks ago. And you, I don't know which race it was you were in. You finished. He says, this guy came out and finished third overall in this race with these young guys. It's incredible. He goes, Larry is just so fast at his age. <laughs> well, I, I, I still ride all the time. I rode yesterday. I rode uh, last weekend. A um, couple days, I'm going up to Glen Helen and did some testing and then there's a works race. I enjoy the works races. It's a little more, um, it's off-road, but has, you know, some motocross sections and off-road sections. And so, um, yeah, no, I, I, I love it. And it's, um, I still have great relationships with sponsors and, um, you know, it keeps you in shape, keeps you, keeps yeah. you going, you know, it keeps you sort of, um, I mean, being behind the steering wheel of a trophy truck, especially nowadays, you, you need to be um, on your game, you know, so, so reflexes, your, your ability to read the terrain, I think staying on a motorcycle has definitely helped me. That helped you a lot. Absolutely. And how about this picture right here? Is that well, bring back some memory? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the best ones right there, you know. I mean, you guys uh, definitely celebrating 2008. You know, and, and, I mean, not many people can um, that know that feeling, but to win, um, you know, to win the Baja 1000 is damn special. <laughs> Say it bluntly. I mean, it's just really special, and and yeah, I've won it a few times, but it's um, it's a very very special moment. And like I say, not just for me, but the whole crew and everybody. So it's um, yeah, it's really special. You know, let, let's you, some people are texting in asking questions. We, I just heard come in. Um, okay, let's take what truck from the Land Shark to every you know let's, in four wheels. Which one do you think? You really had fun driving. What yeah, was the most you know, it's um, again, that's a pretty tough question. But I, I, honestly, that you know, the, in 2000, I got to drive the Toyota with Ivan, so we had the Nevada 2000 and the Baja 2000. So I was contracted for this, those two races that year. Did a lot of testing, and um, that car was really fun and nimble. You know, so in comparison, it was like riding a 250. You know, it was just really, you really had to be just quick like a video game you know and then 
the Truggy is just sort of the opposite. It was like an XR650, you know, big and heavy, really stable, super reliable, you know. I mean, we had a phenomenal run in that car. And then um, when I got in Roger's truck, it was sort of a combination of the two, you know. It, it, even though it looked big, it didn't feel big. And, um, and, and we did a lot of testing in the suspension, you know. I mean, overall handling, I mean, that car today could definitely, you know, win win a race. It's, it's, it's phenomenal how well it handles. So, um, yeah, I've just been blessed with a lot of good equipment, you know. That, to pick just one, I don't know if I really can. Yeah. Even, um, even the current uh, vehicle I'm driving now for the Herps is, um, we've been doing a lot of testing. We're running King Shocks now. And, um, you know, this last HDRA race, we, we ended up second and third overall, the two trucks. And uh, Justin Davis sn snuck up behind yeah. us and, and beat us by 45 seconds, I think it was. But <laughs> But yeah, I mean, 800 horsepower and three feet of wheel travel and 39 inch tires, it's pretty hard not to have a good time. Well, you've done <laughs> any, any special, you know, your most favorite place in Mexico, we get, we'll wrap up kind of the end of the show here, but tell everybody any special place down there? Yeah, probably the Palapa down at San Juan Nico, maybe. <laughs> Overlooking really? the bay, a Scorpion really? Bay. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, it's, a, it's such a, we're blessed with such a, a beautiful place to go race and the people and, and the beaches and the missions. And I've spent a little bit of time being a tourist, but all the years, um, I think my dad took me to La Paz the first time when I was like 15 years old. But um, I, I really enjoy, um, it's, it's a beautiful place for sure. Well, thank you very much, Larry, for yeah, joining no, us. Yeah, my on pleasure. Live. We're going to have to get you back on here. We got so many more I, I'd questions. Love to, to I would ask. love to come back on. And yeah, there's uh, we could touch on a lot of different things. You know, I mean, we didn't even get to talk about Dakar really in yeah. detail, and a lot of great stories. But we'll, we'll we'll get you back on the show. And I know uh, 2013, you're going for that world championship. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I haven't really done the math myself, but I know we're right in the hunt there. We've had some solid finishes, so okay. definitely. Definitely going for that. We're going to announce that tonight when Roger's yeah. on the show. Oh, good. Later we'll have some, have some exact numbers. Exactly. Can't wait to hear. All right. Thank We're you. going to go to commercial. When we come back, we'll be joined by Eves from Stand 21. We're going to talk about some safety equipment for racing. Larry? Excellent. All right. Excellent. We'll be right back. Thank you. Dirt Live, promoting racers one interview at a time.